Tonight, Casino concerns the Target 12 investigators are getting you up to speed on some important developments in casino gambling. Massachusetts officials are getting closer to picking where to build several casinos. And where they go could have an impact on what Rhode Islanders pay in taxes. Here are some key dates you need to know. By the end of this week, a location for a slot parlor in Massachusetts is expected to be selected. Then in the spring, two casino projects will be chosen, followed by a third in the fall. We asked Target 12 investigator Tim White to tell you everything you need to know about the casino's proposals up north. He's here now with the details. The most immediate concern for Rhode Island lawmakers isn't the three large casinos that may be built in Massachusetts in the coming years. It's actually a smaller slot parlor that could end up wreaking havoc on Rhode Island's budget. In 2011, the Massachusetts legislature passed a law legalizing casino gambling in the Commonwealth. The period after the Great Recession has been one of the most expansive periods in the history of gaming in this country. Since then, you've heard a lot about casino proposals coming and going. Here is the latest on where it stands in Massachusetts. The new law split the state into three gaming regions. Each section can get one full-fledged casino. As of now, in Region A, there are competing resort casino proposals in Everett and in Revere. In Region B, there is a pitch for a casino in Springfield. Region C has the longest way to go, with dueling proposals in Fall River and New Bedford, but they are in the early stages. And the Mashpee Wampanoag tribe wants to build a casino in Taunton, but the tribe still needs the federal government's permission to do that. The most immediate concern for Rhode Island officials isn't the casinos, however, it's a slot parlor. There are three parlor proposals, Plainville, Raynham, and Lemonster. Only one can be chosen. If you line those three up on a map and ask yourself which one is best positioned to intercept people headed to Twin River, I think the answer to that question becomes obvious very quickly. Plainville. They've really faced... Uh, UMass Dartmouth professor Clyde Barrow says Plainville would do the most damage to Rhode Island's bottom line. You will start to see an impact on Twin River and Newport Grand before the end of this year once that slot parlor is open. What kind of impact? Here's the estimates from the Rhode Island Budget Office. The state might see $422 million in lost revenue over the next five years if the slot parlor and casinos are built in Massachusetts. Does this keep you up at night? It's certainly concerning. State Senator Daniel DuPont is the chairman of the powerful Senate Finance Committee. He says there may be a novelty factor when they first open in Massachusetts, but he hopes to keep Rhode Island competitive. Does all this mean our taxes are going to go up eventually? Well, I think it's, you know, it's, it's like anything else when you're, when you're coming up with a budget. Naturally, if we're going to take significant hundreds of millions of dollars of hits in various uh, fiscal years, we're going to have to look at everything, and everything will, will be on the table. Professor Barrow says the slot parlor could be up and running as early as August. He says the Springfield Casino, if approved, may be partially open by May 2015. Now, for southeastern Massachusetts, the New Bedford, Fall River, and Taunton plans, those are very much in flux, so any casino in that region appears to be years away. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News. This investigation continues online. Use our interactive map to see the different casino proposals being considered, how close they are to Rhode Island, and a timeline of where the projects stand. It's all on WPRI.com.